Things change quickly these days. Growing up now is a lot different from growing up all those years ago in the small country town of Kyneton. There's no more running around in the backyard for us. Not that we actually did very much of that given that we had a Nintendo, but still. I grew up in different times, when we didn't have Facebook to lean on and clothing was much more fashionable. We didn't have a laptop or an iPad or a mobile phone. I didn't even send my first email until I started uni in 2001. Yet even without these things, I would say I had a happy childhood. There were still the usual pressures, of course, like worrying about how sexy you looked to impress the several people you had a crush on, or mowing lawns to help feed the family. But the idea could never have occurred to us that there would one day be things that would let you chat for free to a friend overseas, or make videos that anyone could watch, or things that could keep an eye on you when you least expect it. I think back to my childhood fetish for dinosaurs and wonder whether all the books I've kept in boxes for years and years should have been recycled long ago. Has learning about stuff by reading become outdated? Are books just boring? Don't listen to her, she can't read. But it is pretty cool when large retail stores install massive animatronic creatures to drive sales of their dinosaur merchandise. Even if it does sound more like a cow. And then there's a genius who invented interactive games to go on the floors of shopping centres to keep children out of the shops so that we can all just browse in peace. But when I'm waiting for my plane at the airport, can I just eat my burger without being bombarded with QR codes promising to entertain me while I eat? Can I just enjoy my food? Social media is now integrated everywhere, to the extent that we might find ourselves liking things before we actually think about whether we like them or not. And cameras permeate our world to the point that we probably just don't even see them anymore. They can be benevolent, of course, and might only catch us out every now and then in a slightly awkward moment. At other times, their function can be more ominous. There are so many questions. Why, on a recent trip to the Gold Coast with my brother and sister, did they ignore the flat screen TV in our room and instead watch programs on their mobile devices? And why, when looking for King Tut's putt putt to play some mini golf, did they go straight to Google Maps rather than ask someone who lives close by for directions? They were actually using their phones like this, even though they're overacting for us here. What does this tell us about ourselves? Have we changed so much? Have our previous identities just floated away in one of David Bowie's bubbles while making our way through the labyrinth of digital culture? The big question is, are we no longer the same people we were? But hang on, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's start the unit. All of these questions and more will be answered, or probably not, in... Dun, 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 dun. Tiffany, are you seriously telling me we couldn't get permission to use the Superman theme song? <laughs> right, well this sounds shit. Let's start again. Hi everyone, it's Adam Brown here. You may remember me from such films as last week's welcome video, whether you want to or not. This is a me lecture. So first things first, what is a me lecture? Well, I've already got I lectures, and several weeks ago I said as a joke to a colleague down the corridor on campus that I was going to do me lectures this trimester, and I didn't actually intend to call them that at the time, but it sort of matched up with something really interesting I was reading. I was reminded by David Bell in, this cha in his chapter in this edited collection, uh, Digital Cultures Understanding New Media. You've got a few readings from this book this week, and we'll come back to it a few times during the trimester. I was reminded by Bell that the concept of me media has become really prominent in the last several years. The idea of uh, producing and distributing content by individuals uh, on YouTube, by Facebook, Vimeo, Twitter, on people's blogs, and often that content focuses on the individual. That's the first thing that sort of matched up with this idea of the me lecture. 
But that's not the only thing we need to think about in this regard. How is it any different from a standard lecture? And you will have some standard lectures that will be recorded as I lectures through the ecosystem and uploaded onto Deacon Cloud during this trimester. Do they serve the same purpose? Are they pretty much the same thing? Here I am talking to you, you're presumably sitting down somewhere listening. There's not as much interaction as there might be in a tutorial or a seminar. So what's the difference? Well, there will be a key difference. In the spirit of Media Studies 2.0, an idea that I'll come back to later on in this video, what I'm going to do each week uh, as part of my on-campus classes is hopefully make these me lectures less about me and more about some of you. With people's permission, of course, and hopefully you're not getting anxious about this for Burwood on-campus students and uh, you are going to show up to class, it's not going to be forced on you. I'm hoping that students will contribute to these videos in some ways. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work, um, but nonetheless, we will give it a go. For this reason, the Me Lectures will actually be usually, usually uploaded around the middle of the week, uh, just because of the way my classes pan out. This obviously does uh, exclude some students, particularly off-campus students, and I hope you don't feel left out uh, in that regard, and I'm sure many of you would be quite relieved. Um, but nonetheless, always remember that whether you're studying on campus or off campus you can always produce your own content please put up feel free to put up links uh, to blog posts or even YouTube clips that you make that are not even necessarily for formal assessment you can always produce content and that can be part of the unit the other aspect of these me lectures that I'm hoping will mean that I'm talking to you on my own less, is that I'm going to talk to other people, uh, often experts in certain fields, as part of these me lectures. Uh, I'm hoping that it'll be at least one person a week. So I'll have conversations with people. And for this week, I had a conversation with someone who's probably quite familiar to, if you've done the first year media and communication units, Dr. Toya Shinkwe, who's a lecturer in media and communication at Deakin. I talked to her about the importance of studying and understanding digital media, but also how it's being used and what changes there have been around teaching and learning in, about and with digital media in recent times. So let's watch that now. So I'm here today talking to Toya Shinkwe. Thank you very much Toya for giving up some of your time and for a busy time. I just wondered if you could express in your own words, just so they don't take my word for it, um, why digital media or new media is so important to learn about today. And more and more our life is, is just as much work as it is play, leisure, entertainment, and we can do it increasingly from one device. Learning how to do it is, is, is important, learning why you do it is important, but for me I think it's really important not only to use the tools but understand the reason behind it, especially for PR practitioners, journalists, and those that are going to be using information. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of the enhancing digital literacy, so we did some research together last year yeah. looking at student perceptions and uses of digital media, and Absolutely. we found some surprising results in Mm. Uh, despite the really prominent social discourses about Generation Next using all this stuff, creating their own videos and so on, we didn't necessarily find that. So um, part, of, part of learning about digital media is also that, you know, practic practicing now. Absolutely. Uh, Giving it a go. The computer won't blow up, the iPad won't blow up, you can always fix it. And so just playing with it, using it and creating a sense of identity and whether you want to have a persona online as such to use it as a professional tool or to just speak to other people of like mind rather than lurking, have a conversation with people. Now, be entertained by the devices. Yeah, Perfect. Right. Perfect. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Message. Have fun. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> exactly. But also do reading, which is fun. <laughs> Yes, via digital devices. Ebooks are great. You can get many articles online. You can, you know, you don't have to read a book. Exactly right. As such. Yeah. Things have changed for us a lot in recent years in terms of when I started teaching seven or eight years ago, a little bit more. Uh, whiteboards were sort of the most prominent device I would use. I barely had uh, a computer monitor with the, the sort of the screen set up that I could use the internet for. Um, I, I once taught in a room that had a black and white TV that had no sound, um, but things changed pretty quickly. And I know that you've started to adopt digital media in terms of Twitter 
uh, in the first year. And I'm wondering how you found that transition, how do you think students have adopted it? I find it's rapid. You're, you're right, the transition to the different media form is moving quickly and it's not just a whiteboard, it's an interactive whiteboard where it's a point technology and you can indicate the screen that you want and bring up multiple screens and that's engaging but it also does it requires the student to, to move between concepts and usually this can be done effectively and quickly not only that it's not just a lecture where you have someone speaking and giving words students won't engage with that so you can now have the lecture going on, you can embed clips within it so you can watch a clip while listening to the lecture at the same time. But something that I love doing is using Twitter and I will say to the students, bring your computers in and talk to me, use the Twitter to have a conversation. So we can use a hashtag, for example, for important issues, depending on what it is, it might be new media, or it can be interactivity. So I can just say this is the hashtag and then we can have a conversation around that particular topic. And it can be done immediately. Um, more so is the connection with the students where those that follow me, I can tell them about something that I've just read, job opportunities, uh, meeting points for example, changes with the lecture content, important issues that are happening. So where they might not get a news feed for themselves, I can collate information and sort of be a broker I guess for important issues that can be disseminated quickly. So the technology is becoming more integral. Is it a new technology or is it just a new way for us to communicate? Is something that is the crux for new media, if you like, studies? How, how new is it? How revolutionary is it? Yeah, exactly. And, and what I find about Twitter is it's also really useful to for, for yourself in terms of the links you might send out. One, it's good to accumulate all that content for the unit, which might be really uh, cutting edge stuff, it might be something that happened in the morning of the class, um, but you can come back to those links and it's sort of a data bank for yourself and I'm sure for students too, if they say if they tweet something they can come back to a link for their assessment, find out what it was. So yeah, it's, you're it's right. really useful and verifying way. information and, and yeah. you know getting the word out if you've got a question about something to, you know, this, this has been done through other social media but increasingly with fewer characters, uh, Twitter is a great tool. Yeah, no, thanks. And we're really enc encouraging you to use Twitter um, and not just follow us necessarily because with issues such as surveillance at the moment and politics with the election coming up and everything else, it's really impossible for us to stay in touch with everything that's happening. So if we accumulate all that information through Twitter and that's what, in that way students are really involved in building learning resources as much as, as, much as we are. I decided not to set up a Facebook group officially for this unit. Obviously, students are welcome to do it if they want, and you know that kind of thing wouldn't be moderated, but they'd be more than welcome to to discuss things about the unit in that regard. What do you think about the use of Facebook? Lots of university lecturers do do it. Um, have you tried that in any of the units you've taught? I don't use the Facebook groups as such. Um, we've got the professional. Cloud Deacon site this year where we can have discussions. I use Twitter a lot, so I'll use a hashtag for particular themes. I think that it moves you know, topics through quickly. Research is showing that students often don't want to have a Facebook account with lecturers or, or with academic staff, that this is something that they use socially and privately and, and away from, from the professional sphere. However, I'm not saying that this shouldn't be used, so it'd be interesting to find from your group, would they like to do that? Would they engage with that? Would they engage honestly with it? And there are many platforms that you can use, including Google as, as another. Uh, I haven't used it. Uh, it's interesting to see how Facebook is used more and more professionally. Uh, other faculties, for example, are saying consciously consider your, your profile so that some students have been advised not to talk about failing exams but to talk up how well they're doing because this is something that's referred to by employers and students should indeed remember the conversations they have now with people that may be their peers and friends, could be their boss in 10 years time. So there's this balance between how you use social media in, in an informal sense and, and how it could be interpreted in the future. Yeah, well that was my sense about Facebook. You know, I'm not a big mm. Facebook user myself, but you know, being on Twitter and we've, we've got yeah. other platforms. Well, thank you very much again, Toy, for talking to us. And um, we will hope, we'll no doubt see you around.